Hi, my name is Jenna Heiss. I'm currently serving as the Statewide Suicide Prevention Coordinator for the Department of State Health Services. I'm here today to talk to you about suicide prevention. The most important message that I can leave you with today is that suicide is preventable. Help works, treatment is available, and people do recover. Here in the state of Texas, we take a true public health approach to suicide prevention. New research has shown that by implementing specific strategies in our care systems, that we can save lives. The new goal in healthcare is zero suicides. Imagine you or someone you care about actually has the courage to reach out and ask for help. And they go to a clinic or a hospital or to their mental health provider. And when they get there, we have a suicide safe care site. And what that means is everybody there is ready to intervene. They have the skills to intervene and that the person that you care about or yourself feel comfortable and safe. And you know that everyone there is committed to seeing you through your current crisis. That is our goal across the state. Here in Texas, we have a state plan. It's based on the National Strategy for Suicide Prevention. We have videos showing youth and other young adults reaching out and asking for help or referring a friend for help. We also have a smartphone app that you can download for free. All of this is available at texassuicideprevention.org. There are statewide community mental health centers that provide crisis services if you or someone you care about needs help. Our assistant commissioner at the Department of State Health Services is here to talk to you more about that. Hi, my name is Mike Maples. I am the assistant commissioner of mental health and substance abuse services here at the Department of State Health Services. We are responsible for managing the public mental health system, which includes the safety net for mental health services across the state. Services that are available at our community mental health services include several components uh, that make up that crisis system. First is the crisis hotline. Every one of our local community mental health centers uh, has a crisis hotline available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That hotline is certified by the American Association of Su Suicidology. It also has the capacity to deploy mobile crisis outreach teams that can go on site anywhere in the community in response to someone in need. It is available regardless if you have other resources or regardless of who is involved. Law enforcement contacts us, individual family members, and individuals themselves contact us seeking out our help. If you call the mobile crisis outreach team, you will be doing that through the crisis hotline. And we have a crisis hotlines at all 39 of our community mental health centers that cover all 254 counties. And they're available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And they are gonna be the ones that will be able to deploy the mobile crisis outreach team, either with law enforcement or independent of law enforcement. And they will come out to your location and their first job is to assess and stabilize the situation. Help identify what is going on with the individual or with the family that has caused this crisis. Uh, they have options then at that point of uh, how to uh, proceed from there. Uh, referring to other services uh, in the community, such as the mental health center itself, peer support services, uh, other residential options, such as crisis respite centers and, and crisis residential units. Uh, and then, of course, if the need is there, uh, provide access to psychiatric hospitalizations for folks that really need longer-term secure environments. And that will all be done in the privacy and security of, of you, with you and your family, and uh, we'll be able to do that as quickly as possible. If somebody showed up at one of our crisis uh, centers or one of our mental health clinics, uh, the first job that we, again, would have would be to assess and stabilize the situation. You would meet somebody in our community mental health center who has been trained in crisis services, and their job would be to assess and stabilize uh, the situation, and then make decisions with you and your family about what else is needed, either follow-up care uh, with the community mental health center, with your doctor, or if you needed more intensive services to help stabilize the situation, access to uh, psychiatric hospitalization if needed. 
The role of our community mental health centers is to provide safety net services. Safety net services are those services that are available regardless of if you have any resources to pay, whether regardless of whether you have insurance or anything else. Their primary function is for, to be there to provide services without regard to your financial situation or other resources. And those safety net services include immediate uh, access to care or services, access to doctors, access to medications, or even access to hospitals. Uh, all of that is a part of our public mental health system, which is the safety net across the state. Suicide is preventable. It is very important that persons thinking about suicide or knowing somebody that's thinking about suicide access services. Services are available in all your communities. Please reach out to them if you have these thoughts or you know somebody that does. I'm Dr. Kari Wolf. I'm a psychiatrist and the head of the Seton Mind Institute and the UT Southwestern Psychiatry Training Programs in Austin. If you or someone you know is having thoughts about wanting to die, about life not being worth living, or actually doing something to end your own life, it's important that you get help because this is a symptom of psychiatric illness. And sometimes people who are experiencing those thoughts feel very hopeless and don't think there is a way to get help. So it's important that you seek treatment. There are lots of ways that you can seek treatment. If you already have a mental health professional, a psychiatrist or a therapist taking care of you, contact them to get assistance. There are also crisis lines in most communities, so you could access crisis services through the crisis line, or you can always call 911 for help. If you or someone you love is having immediate thoughts of wanting to hurt yourself, it's important to keep them safe. Do whatever it takes to keep them safe. This may mean calling 911 to have emergency responders come help you with this. It may be to take them to the nearest emergency room so that they can be kept safe. If you go into an emergency room for help, it's important to tell them truthfully what is going on. If you are having thoughts of suicide, tell them that you are having thoughts of suicide. That way you will get quickly assessed and moved into a safe environment. You'll oftentimes be taken into a room that looks a little different from other emergency rooms because it is a safe environment. Sometimes they may take some of your belongings from you, and this may be offensive, but really they're doing this to keep you safe. They don't want you to use anything that you've brought with you to harm yourself because they know that you're not thinking the way you would ordinarily be thinking. Once they have kept you safe, they will do an assessment. And in that assessment, they will help determine what the most appropriate setting for you will be. Sometimes this may include inpatient psychiatric hospitalization. Unfortunately, sometimes when you come into the emergency room, a psychiatric bed will not be immediately available. It's important that you take a friend or trusted loved one with you to help you during this time. It's also important that they be given rights to give information about how you're doing because we want to get you better. And we need that family involvement or that involvement of that trusted friend to help you get better. After you leave the emergency room or the psychiatric hospital, it's important that you continue to get care. These illnesses do not heal overnight. They take ongoing care with an outpatient physician and or an outpatient therapist to get you all the way better. While you're getting treatment, whether in the hospital or after you leave the hospital, it's important to continue having your family and trusted friends involved in your care. They are often a source of information on how you're doing better and where you might still have some room to improve that you may not realize yourself. So the clinicians need that information to really get you all the way back to normal. One more step as you're working towards recovery is to have a safety plan. This will often be a plan that will be begun while you're in the hospital, but it will continue to evolve through your outpatient care providers. This will be a plan for you to utilize and your family to utilize anytime things start to take a turn for the worse or you start to have thoughts about not wanting to be alive anymore. A safety plan will be individualized. Oftentimes it will have activities listed that will help you decompress or de-stress in the moment that you're really getting ramped up. There will often be phone numbers of trusted people that you can call to reach out for help, and there are always emergency contacts as part of your safety plan.
When you are trying to get services from a mental health professional and you have insurance, there are really two ways to access those services. The first is that you can talk with your primary care physician and see if they're able to manage your symptoms or if you need a referral to a mental health professional. They often know good mental health professionals in your community who would be able to help you. The other option is to contact your insurance company. Many psychiatrists in Texas aren't on all the insurance panels, so just because someone's good doesn't mean that you will be able to access them through your insurance plan. So talking to your insurance company, they will have a list of providers who work with their patients. Now that you've heard from Assistant Commissioner Mike Maples and Dr. Wolf about the resources available in Texas, I would like to tell you about a resource that you could have on you at all times when you or someone you care about needs help. That is the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline phone number, 1-800-273-TALK. Please, save a number to save a life.